Um, today's talk is uh, mass patterning challenge, challenges for EV and 7 and beyond. First, I'd like to recognize my colleague that um, collaborated with me on this uh, presentation, Henry Cambarian, who's in the, in the audience. Um, so today's talk is about mass patterning, which is one of the, the many manufacturing challenges for EV mask making. You know, there are others that are outside the scope of this talk, like um, defect, mask defectivity, disposition and repair, and of course the pellicle. We're gonna talk about patterning today. Um, I'll talk about the, the EV technology drivers and the, the mask roadmap to meet those. Um, the seven nanometer mask process status, uh, mask and mask process characterization, process improvements towards five nanometer, so the tech drivers, obviously, over the next couple of years, we're going to be moving into uh, five, we're in seven nanometer production starting this year, five nanometer will, will come in the next couple of years, and then the complementary uh, memory nodes along with that, and that's going to drive, um, among other things, um, many needs for, for mask improvements in terms of minimum feature resolution, main and, and SRAFs. Um, pattern fidelity, um, specifically LER, um, CD control, standard CD control 1D metrics here, um, pattern placement, mask 3D effects become more important. And of course there's some specific um, black border uh, challenges, um, particularly the, the out of band wavelength suppression. So um, this is my company, Fatronics's plan to, to support the, these nodes, so our target, this isn't really the node um, roadmap, but our, our target for um, being able to support um, N7 as of today, um, early N5 R&D and N5 um, mass production, along with early N3 R&D. So we have the main, main feature going from 52 to, to 30 nanometers. Um, sub-resolution assist features from 40, if at all needed for N7, um, down to 24. Um, CD uniformity uh, is a very kind of a ambiguous, uh, so I put the specification versus the um, actual line space capability because this is very feature dependent. Um, registration um, pattern placement going from three to one and a half nanometer. Um, uncorrected linearity from five to, to below three nanometer. Uh, big important topic is um, line edge roughness from three to down to two. And then of course the 3D effects are gonna drive a lot of blank um, innovations, um, particularly with, with the absorber thickness where it's 60 today um, going down to um, as of today as low as, as 30. And like I mentioned, the uh, black border out of band reflectance challenges. So just a quick um, recap of current N7 performance. This is an N7 um, class mask, a 52 nanometer dense line around a 1.5 nanometer um, MTT, a three sigma of around one. Um, a 64 nanometer space with an SRAF, 40 nanometer SRAF, which may or may not um, actually show its um, show itself in seven nanometer of MTT of less than one and three sigma of around 1.3. And here's some minimum feature resolution numbers, ISO space of 42 nanometer, ISO line of 36 nanometer and dense line of 48 nanometer. So this is a legacy um, process that is uh, rolled over from the ARF regime and should be, in terms of patterning anyway, basic patterning be acceptable for the seven nanometer node. But what we're challenged with um, as we, we move past that is um, increased uh, pat pattern complexity. So um, with the you know, departure from multi-patterning um, at N7, we're going to see more um, more criticality of, of, of the 2D structures, and that's only gonna increase as we move through, into and through uh, five nanometer with um, increase, especially with increasingly um, aggressive OPC, specifically the SRAF. So this is a, this is a test chip of some, 
some VIA structures that we would expect to see with um, N7, some basic um, S, uh, OPC model there with no SRAFs. Um, here's a, a metal with um, some simpler SRAFs, and then we never know what's going to happen at N3, so, so we kind of try to throw a, a monkey wrench in the SPC engine and make something um, very complicated so that we can, so that we can do uh, good process development. Um, so the first thing that we need to do to do that is to find ways that characterize pattern fidelity. And the two things that I'd like to talk about today are, are edge roughness and then other types of mask process-induced um, error. So LER is typically, this is a chart, LER, um, the number through dose. And in, the, in our world, um, we typically measure this with a CD sim and we take the three sigma of some very large sample size of slices across a fairly short length of a, of a feature. And that typically only captures um, high frequency LER. Um, Chris Mack gave this paper at the last EV conference and he was highlighting that, um, you know, the normal ways of characterizing LER of today uh, may not be adequate because so these four lines all have the same three sigma in terms of LER, but they have different frequencies. And when it comes to masks, um, the pattern on the mask is more likely to transfer to the wafer in the, in the low frequency regime. And the best way to capture that is really uh, mask LCDU measurements. And the measurements of the day, there's no, um, that I know of anyway, <coughs> um, common way of, of doing that. And I think that um, well thought out LCDU specifications for, for the um, mask manufacturer needed here that are specific to particular patterns and layers. And then there's other um, mask process error that, that needs to be characterized and considered. So, you know, 1D uh, metrics that we've always looked at, like linearity that we see here of, of a few different types of lines and spaces are important, but all, even more important are, are 2D metrics. And here we have, um, this is a contour extracted from a, from a mask of a, of a via um, with an uh, assist feature um, overlaid to the, to the design. And you can do a lot of stuff with that. One thing that you can do is, um, is look at the area loss versus design. <clears throat> And here we see this kind of 2D linearity error between the SRAF and the, and the main. Other edge placement um, errors are important to look at as well. Um, feeding that um, back into the mask process um, development loop and also feeding it forward into a, a mask process error correction engine are important. So now that we've talked about how to characterize pattern fidelity, how do we how do we define process capability? So what we did at Fatronics is design this um, test chip where we shrunk and biased um, some, some patterns that were notional um, L7 to L3 sizes with um, very aggressive SRAFs. Use those to determine uh, minimum feature sizes for various structures and then associate those with um, specific MRC rules to define what the capability of whatever process you're looking at. So that's, that's kind of how for, for the study that I've kind of referenced here, um, the characterization was done. Well, once you've done that, um, you have a way to um, characterize pattern fidelity, then use that to characterize the process. What do you do to improve pattern fidelity? Well, uh, specifically LER is definitely needed um, to be improved for, for uh, the five nanometer node. Um, the easiest way to do that is obviously to um, use higher dose resist because of the, the relationship between LER and dose. So obviously low sensitive, low sensitive high dose resists are needed. Uh, the big problem with that obviously with the current writer, the, the variable shape beam writer is the right time. So here I have kind of a high exposure load, um, estimation of right time over node and um, low exposure load. So this would be kind of even more metal or, or more exposure. And this is kind of a really low, uh, low load via or something like that. And we, we expect at seven nanometer to start seeing these higher dose um, resists, either that, be it 
uh, chemically amplified resists or non-chemically amplified chain scission type resists from generally over 100 microcoulombs, but really anywhere over 60 uh, to 150 over the, the current VSB four pass mode. So that's really um, only going to be feasible for the VSB for some, for some low load applications. You can see that, um, that for some of these low load applications, we're, we're seeing write times that are on the higher end of what we're living with today at 10 and 14. So there is some extendability of the VSB, but of course, ultimately for, for high volume manufacturing at five, the multi-beam and this particular one is um, the IMS, but we'll hear about the other um, version uh, later in a later talk. So we've talked about the process, but of course the blank material has to be optimized as well. So today um, the industry seems to be kind of um, fixed on the, on the 60 nanometer um, absorber, ta uh, tantalum based absorber stack. Um, the process is fairly well characterized. Um, this is an example of 50 nanometer um, lines and spaces, uh, TEM um, on the 60 nanometer stack. Moving into, um, into five, into and through five, um, the, the mass uh, 3D effects are gonna become more and more important. So, so shrinking the absorber stack is the, the way to address that. Um, 55 is considered at this time because of the reflectance um, below that, the, the limitation of the current uh, tantalum formulations that exist. But since there are, this is another paper from last, uh, last EV conference, Sharp paper, um, Bank et, et al, um, showing the, the nils benefit of the 40 nanometer nickel versus the current, I think this is the 55 nanometer version of the tantalum stack. So alternate materials are going to be needed to go any, any um, thinner than 55. So for the, for the high NA um, NXE 3500, we're expecting um, some alternative material with a thickness of 30 to 35 for, for the um, three nanometer node. And um, hopefully these materials will be designed well to be faster etching than current films so that we can minimize the resist thickness at the mask level and, and improve toppling and thus improve um, minimum feature resolution. So there's also um, a data uh, component for this, specifically the mask process correction, mask process error correction. These slides are courtesy of um, our friends at NCS. So um, NCS is currently for the EUV space gonna focus on accounting for the inherent difference in the proximity effect um, between the ARF and, and EUV blank, specifically the short range backscatter. Um, they believe that, um, that this is gonna be kind of a two pronged approach, continuing the proximity effect correction inside of the, the E-beam tool uh, on kind of a, a broad mesh and then on a finer mesh with the um, MPC software um, completing that correction. And then the other thing is to account for 2D structures. Um, and this goes back to the contouring that I talked about earlier, um, using mass contours um, for these 2D structures to feed into the, into the mask model. And so all these things come together uh, to provide a more accurate um, MPC model. Um, pattern placement, also very important. Um, here's an example of a, a seven nanometer class mask, a little less than three nanometer. And this is without charging effect correction, actually. A little less than three nanometer, um, uh, three sigma. Um, but solutions end to N5 and beyond are gonna require improvements, um, including one of the things is n -di um, metrology for to maximize the sample size and to build more accurate custom. You can really extend the the utilization of the single beam tool with um, more accurate custom layer by layer uh, grids to write these uh, lay masks to. And then of course physical charging countermeasures like charge dissipation layers, improved um, computational methods, the the E-beam company's um, charging effect correction algorithms, but then ultimately uh, um, advanced writing platforms are gonna be needed into, into five nanometer and beyond. 
So the black border um, issue poses its own um, patterning challenges. The problem obviously is that um, while the, the floor of the of the sub the LTEM substrate doesn't reflect the EUV. It does reflect the um, out of band uh, VUV and DUV um, some enough to affect the, the litho, litho process. So we need out of band suppression um, between about 100 and 280 nanometers of, of less than 2%. So my colleague Henry Cambarian is, has uh, developed a process to do that. Here's some um, reflectance results from that. These were measured in, uh, from a mask that had the proprietary photronics process uh, measured at PTB Germany. So here's the, the, the bare LTEM reflectance through wavelength. And sorry if that's hard to read, but here's the, um, and this is just uh, four different points on the mask measured um, through wavelength. And, and at all points, the reflectance is below 2%. So now we've found ways to characterize pattern fidelity, um, characterize the process, improve the process of so putting it all together. Um, we, we do an iterative process to, to um, develop the mass making uh, processes needed to, to get into N5 and beyond. So here's some N7 class processes. Here's one and here's another. These are um, similar and different tones. I won't say which is which, um, but not not anywhere near the pattern fidelity that's needed for for N5 and beyond. And here's an N5 prototype process that um, that at least qualitatively is better. It's still uh, much under development, but we do target mass capability to support N5 and early N3 um, R&D within the next two years. So in summary, um, processes for EUV N7 are known and in place across the industry. N5 and beyond presents new mass patterning challenges, such as increased pattern complexity with the proliferation of SRAFs, escalating error contribution of mass 3D defects. So the solutions moving forward are also known. Enhanced mass characterization, lower sensitivity resists, mask data manipulation for mass process error correction, and, and blank material innovations.